You want to get in my lap? You want to get in the lap? Okay. Okay. Oh, how, how are you still dirty? What, what is this? And uh, this is Clover. He's here just hanging out. Don't mind him. He's just being extra cute. Um, but I just wanted to... Hey guys, it's Kay. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Kay. I'm a professional home organizer and singer here in the Boston area. And I'm here to inspire you to live a more organized life. So in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about my life and why I became a professional organizer. And if you're interested in becoming a professional organizer, maybe this video will be helpful to you to uh, discover whether or not it's something that would work for you. So um, if you want to hear about that, stay tuned. <music> In order to give you guys a bigger understanding about why I became a professional organizer, I feel like it's necessary to give you a little bit of background about my life. I am an only child of two military docs, so that means we moved around a lot. I lived in Frankfurt, Germany for three years, then we moved to Augusta, Georgia for a couple of years, in which part of my heart is still in the South. I love it very much. Um, and then we moved back to the DC area where the rest of my family is from, and within that, area we moved quite a few times so my parents uh, decided that they didn't like the house we were living in so we moved maybe three times when we were living in Maryland and then of course I had to move to go to college and lived in a dorm there so there's a, there's been a lot of moving around in my life. I've always been the kind of person uh, and, and was the kind of child who really 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 loved their personal space because because I was the only child I always had my own room and it was one of my greatest pleasures just to spend time in there. I was a very independent child and I always sort of marched to the beat of my own drum and I'm very, very grateful that my parents always just let me be who I was. They never forced me to fit in with all of the other kids. They never forced me to um, pursue a career that they thought was practical because I went to um, a conservatory to become an opera singer. Um, that's totally impractical, but they always let me be who I am and I really appreciate them for that. Probably the thing they didn't like the most is that when I was in my room, I was actually a really messy child. I had a lot of toys. I piled toys around. I piled my clothes around. I piled things in piles. Um, but I was very organized in my mess. I knew where everything was. I knew where to find things. And my drawers were completely just stuffed full of junk. I was a really messy person. And my it frustrated my mother more than it frustrated my father. But um, at the same time though, I really, really enjoyed my space. Like I said, I went to conservatory for four years to get my bachelor's in music and went to um, conservatory for two years, a different conservatory for two years to get my master's degree in classical singing. And after that, um, I sort of lost my confidence mojo for singing. I, I wasn't really competitive about it. And I didn't really believe, I had imposter syndrome basically, which is something I struggle with. After I graduated from graduate school I went to be a music librarian at Boston Ballet which was the greatest job I've ever had to this day I still I still would work there if they didn't have layoffs but it was really fun after I worked at Boston Ballet I worked in arts administration at uh, a conservatory here in Boston where I did international student services and I was the like Dean's assistant to the Dean of Students I left that job to pursue a career in veterinary medicine I didn't actually go full out with that but I was in a pre-medical program for a couple of years. I was working and studying. I had a horse at that point. I wanted to be an equine veterinarian. I was teaching horseback riding um, and I was very busy and I just got really burnt out by that whole thing. I was working way too hard at school and not getting the results that I wanted and I just, when I worked at an animal hospital, it just didn't feel like they were my people if you know what I mean. So after I left the pre vet program, uh, which I almost finished but didn't finish, <laughs> um, I, needed a, I needed a job. I had been injured, I had fallen my, off my horse and uh, fractured my ankle super badly, by the way. <laughs> I had to have screws and everything in there, it was terrible. But I needed a job, so I was rifling through the Craigslist listings and a container store was hiring. So I went, I submitted my resume. I said to myself I didn't ever want to work retail again because I'd worked a lot of retail jobs and I just wasn't into it. But um, I I really needed a job at that point and I was willing to consider going into retail again if it was the right fit. I got the job at the container store and they started me working in merchandise processing and that's basically you wake up at 
four in the morning and go to work at five in the morning and you basically stock shelves when the shipment comes in. It sounds horrible, but it was actually really fun. After working enough of those shifts, um, the manager asked me if I wanted to work on the sales floor and I said, um, not really, but <laughs> um, sure, sure, I'll give it a chance. And I had a, a few shifts on the sales floor and I absolutely loved it. I fell in love with organizing products. I think that they're really fun. I had a lot of fun like helping people solve problems and it was just like the best job ever. I noticed in working at the container store that I was particularly good at solving problems that people had and I don't think I was aware that professional organizing was a career until I worked at the container store um, because professional organizers would come in and you know get products and be with clients and I was like well that's that's kind of fun I'm like what kind of that's fun I, 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 I you know that sounds like a great career I never really considered it when I worked there that's when my organizing bug like clicked I my space I, I saw it in a different way and I was able to make changes and make systems that worked and I became sort of obsessed with the idea of having an organized clean space. When I had been working there for a few years, I decided to start my own business, but not right away. I just wanted to experiment on a few friends and that's exactly what I did. I, I reached out on Facebook. I said, hey, do you need a space organized? I want to go and practice. So let's book a few hours and we'll go and work together and I'll see if it's cool. I found that organizing people's spaces is a very intimate experience. The home is where you sleep, it's where you procreate, it's where you eat, it's where you use the bathroom. It's very, it's a very intimate kind of space. And to have someone, a stranger, come into your space and try to have it function better for you and deal with some of your things, touching things that are yours that you might believe are sacred, it's a very it's a very delicate situation to be in. So um, being a people person is a huge benefit to professional organizing if you're considering it. After I experimented on a few friends and I thought that I could maybe handle strangers, I did go ahead and set up like a deal with, um, it was Living Social, but it's the, it's like the same as Groupon. Um, I don't recommend doing this for like a long period of time because they do take like most of your money and you can't make a living working for um, getting leads from that because it's just not sustainable. Hands-on organizing and not just like coaching and stuff like that. Hands-on organizing and dealing with things and people and stuff. It's actually really labor intensive and I didn't realize that when I first started working. We had a couple of clients uh, tell me that I wasn't charging enough for my services. So um, it's it's a lot of hard work and uh, a lot of people don't realize that it takes a lot out of the organizer as well um, as it takes out of the client to, to do some of that stuff, although probably less from us than it does the client. There are a number of organizations that are associated with a professional organi organizing career. Uh, the main one is NAPO. It used to stand for the National Association for Professional Organizers, but I don't think it stands for that anymore. They do provide an accreditation, which is Certified Professional Organizer, CPO. I don't have this accreditation. It does involve um, paying money and taking an exam. I think that's basically it. So um, I think that it's something that I will do in the future. It's just something I haven't done yet. Um, but NAPO will um, help you. It, there's a membership required and they have you as a provisional member if you're not um, a full-time professional organizer, if you haven't done enough hours yet. NAPO is a great organization. They will help you with um, insurance. They will help you with uh, asking questions if you have questions for another organizer. They're great. And it's great to be a NAPO member just to have, to, you know, if you want to go to meetings. I actually went to an event uh, about hoarding that was hosted by Matt Paxton. I don't know if you guys watch Hoarders, maybe you do, um, but I love Matt Paxton. He's a great guy. He knows what he's talking about. And uh, I actually talked with him for a while. He's super, super sweet. And I learned a lot about hoarding. I, I don't specialize in hoarding, but it was great to learn about it and to sort of recognize you know, whether I should pass a client on to someone else who specializes in that service. And that's another thing too, is a lot of professional organizers work in different niches. They're, we don't all do the same thing. Some people just want to do the consulting. They don't actually want to do like the lifting of stuff. Some people deal with like big projects at once, like clearing out entire houses. Or there's people like me who I like to go into houses and be more of a clutter coach. Um, sometimes I have gone to places and I actually touched anything and just been there as a cheerleader. 
As far as what organizers charge, this will vary widely depending on where you live in the United States, whether you live in an urban area or a more rural area or a suburban area, it, it varies greatly. If you're interested, I would probably go and Google some of the, if, if organizers announce their rates um, online, go and do some research on that. I personally don't do that. In the beginning, I did suffer with a lot of um, imposter syndrome. I thought that I was stealing money from people. Basically, I was like, who, I, I don't understand how I'm helping in this circumstance. Um, but this, the real situation was, and I had to take back and be objective about it, is that people were very happy when I left. Uh, not about me leaving, but they were very happy with the results of our sessions. They were very happy and very inspired. A lot of them would contact me and say, I, you know, I kept going after you left and I did all this stuff and they would send me these really cute text with pictures of their, you know, the, the closet they went to after I left. And I have, I, I feel really grateful and I also feel like my service has value. So that's a lot of the problem I had in the beginning is I couldn't see the value in what I was bringing, but um, know that in a lot of services, I do think it has a lot of emotional value to people. Your space is a very important place. I have, have been very transparent about the fact that I am a very anxious person. My father and I talk about this sometimes, that he was like, you were a really anxious child. You were always scared that something was going to happen to you. You said that like, what if something blah, 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 this happened? And like, what if it, I was, for some reason, I was always really obsessed with like an accident happen, happening to me. Um, and it didn't help that I was in earshot of the news for like, I don't know, like five hours a day or something like that when I heard the news in the background. And having lived in s some high crime areas, I just got this sort of in impression that the world was a dangerous place, and it is, but in general, you, you have to live your life, right? <laughs> so um, in order to deal with some of those anxious feelings about the world coming like to get me or like being having a target on my back permanently, is that I made my space really relaxing and comforting. And I believe that it's because that that's something I can control. I can't control what happens on the outside. I can't, I have no control over that. Like I'm a really anxious flyer. Like when I get on a plane, it's it's like, whoa. I'm actually a little better than I used to be traveling now because I've traveled a lot last year. I'm, I'm better than I used to be. I used to like really, I used to cry on takeoff. I used to like freak out if there was any turbulence. And now I'm like a little better. I, I actually don't have to, I used to have to take like relaxers when I got on planes, but now I, I'm, I'm starting to try and cope with it. But that stuff really makes me anxious. The outside world makes me anxious, but I still I still live my life. I still get in my car. I still um, get on planes. I still go out and walk on the street because life is short. I mean, YOLO, seriously. But in order to ease some of that anxiety, I do make my space really comforting and warm for me. And I believe that there's a lot of value in that for other people as well. Because I, I, I know I'm not the only one that feels that way. And there's a lot of chaos in life. And I feel like if you can take one stress away, then it's it. this is the easiest one to do. So I hope that answers a lot of questions for you guys. Um, I don't, at this point, uh, I, I have a lot of things that I'm doing at this point. So organizing is only a third of my career, like actually in-person organizing is a third of my career. I spent a lot of time on the YouTube channel and I spent a lot of time singing. I actually, I'm gonna quick edit this video and put it up because I have a whole, whole score to get through this afternoon because I didn't realize I had my first rehearsal for this concert uh, today and I, 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 I'm not, I'm not ready. <laughs> I also want to say a quick thank you for those of you who have been subscribing to the channel over the last few weeks. I, I don't know where you're coming from but I thank you so much for coming and sharing the videos and leaving really nice comments. Uh, I'm sure that you've, if you've noticed that I'm in the comments a lot, I, I try my best to maintain uh, the fact that I've acknowledged every comment. It's gonna be a little harder in the, in the next coming weeks because of the gig that I have. But I just wanna thank you all. I think we're at this point we're at 24,000 subscribers and that, the, I, thank you. <laughs> I started this channel because I wanted to make a video that showcased some of the container store products that I had and some of my abilities to uh, the clients that I had when I was working as a contract employee for a container store. And I wasn't even sure I was going to make that video public, to be honest with you. I was just maybe going to share it with some clients or some 
potential clients to be like, hey, I know, I know what I'm doing. But, um, but somehow that video got picked up and suggested and people were watching it and I decided, hey, I, I'm a performer. I, I like make videos, I do more. And it's turned into one of my favorite things to do and I just want to thank you guys so much for um, enjoying the channel and I hope that I will continue to please you in the future. <laughs> if you guys have any more questions, just let me know in the comments. I'll try to be as active as I can in the comments. Um, but again, this week is going to be a little bit cray cray. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Look at, look at, he's out. He's at the park for like an hour chasing the ball. He's out. All right, you guys, I'm bringing it back. Stay neat. Bye. You ready to practice? Let's do this.